I don't know if that's going to do any good. You know, one sheet of the lane for what long. So, the, be the best thing to do is just, they're moving the engines out now. Okay. And so yes. it's shaded in there, and we'll just relocate the meeting from this room to the engine room so you're not standing out in the sun, and everything will be good if that's okay. With that's good. Yeah, that's good. 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 Good.
they can span the whole flume to the gate and then from there replace some of the pipe up the hill, which would be upstream. Right, you see, and, and in doing that, we can evaluate how bad some of that pipe is. And it it's going to be $40,000. That's a huge repair. Um, you know, I know we can keep it together for a little while, for a few years. It's, it's going to need to be done. We'll probably have to do a sort of special assessment on fees, budget for that, to get that repaired. It's just more than we can afford to do without a special assessment. We try, we try to and keep it going as best we can. So that's what we dealt with. Uh, we had a uh, uh, curbside property. We had a bunch of eight times excavated up there. Uh, patched as many of those as we could find. Had some stuff up. Had, had, had some uh, problems with damage. How long is that part? Fish enhancement project that's being the reason that 
take a lot of years here. Uh, we signed a contract with the company in Salem. For those of you that haven't read the newsletter, we've been working on this fish and cancer project for a couple of years. Uh, we've we, uh, worked with Waterwatch, who were in the instrumental in the removal of South Rapids Dam, Wolverine Dam, the diversion from the old power plant there in Wolverine. After removing all of those obstacles, Goldfield Irrigation Dish became the number one, the top of the list is the number one fish killer in their eyes in the river. They came to us uh, two years ago, said that uh, we're in non compliance with the way that our diversion is built. We're diverting water continuously, go back in the river, causes false traction. Uh, our fish down fish green area is too small. They said there was just a lot of things that they would like to see updated for fish protection. They're trying to save the fish. So they offered to help us. They said they'd like to partner up with us. They would help us get all the grants. It wouldn't cost the district or the patrons anything if we would work with them on getting an engineer to engineer a way that we could not divert the water through that long part of the canal and put in new head gates and upgrade the fish passage. And we checked with the attorney, we asked a bunch of questions. The long and short of it is we're not compliant to federal regulations with some of that. It had to be changed. Our choice was to partner up with them and try to improve and change that to where we'll be in compliance. Or, if we didn't do anything, they assured us that we would be fined for being in non-compliance. How much is the fine? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows okay. that. Okay. We're not willing to pay you. Okay. All right. I'm not going to disrespect I'm just asking how once, much is the once, fine? Once we have a fine, they can shut down our ditch. And no. once we have a fine, we can no longer be eligible You will not receive a grant if you're fine, you know, to fix something you've been fine. So we, we agreed. We'll get the question. Okay. Right. So we agreed to uh, partner up with them. We hired an engineering firm, came up with a design that will improve everything. Uh, we signed a contract. We have a contractor out of Albany that is going to come and do the work. Uh, we're still in a little bit of limbo on when it's going to start. He's taken it's the 18th. We thought the water wouldn't be shut off until maybe the 28th of this month. Yes. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen. I was on the phone with him several times today to see if... Uh, and part of that work is the gates that control the flow into our irrigation canal are several thousand feet from where the diversion out of the river is. So it diverts continually out of the river in a ditch. Wintertime spills back in the river. Summertime we open up our three gates to let the amount of water we're about to have. We're going to be putting the gates at the diversion so there will no longer be water year round coming or more water coming down that canal than what we're allowed to have. And all of that canal will be tight of passage for fish from there to the fish streams, any small fish or whatever can get back into the river. So I tried to, I've been working with the contractors, see if you can just do the, okay, back. the inch stream work by federal regulations has to be done between June 15th and September. So they've got, got to do the inch stream work, they've got to build a copper dam, make a dry spot for the contract to build the gate. Once that's done, they can remove the copper nail. You can ask them if we wait to do the piping. When we do that, which could take three, four weeks, um, we can open the water back up, and then maybe, you know, October sometime, 
we can shut that down and we can do all the work in the ditch with the pipe. We would be out of the stream so we don't, we're not dealing with those federal regulations. And I'm still working with the contractor to see exactly when all that's going to happen. So that's kind of the update on the fish front. Would you say again what you said about the amount of time that it's shut down? If I can get them to just do the concrete work now, it would probably be three weeks. If they're doing everything, it would be um, four to six weeks. Is there a way to appeal that federal regulation so that we can start to work after the end of our irrigation? Let me, get, let me get to the rest of it. Any questions on what we kind of about that? No. no. Well, it's a turn across the That pipe is across 
Silent Move now is not made to be Apple 7 or to be, that application is totally wrong. Once, once again, he's right. He's done a lot more than all of us put together. And I think we should listen to him and see what he has to say. If we can talk him into hanging around a little bit on, on Friday morning before he drives home. Um, and we can bring those thoughts up to him. I, I would just like to like, go down. I, mean, I don't know where, I don't know where the 5,000 starts and stops. I mean, I don't know if you talk well, about know. just replacing that pipe. He's patching that pipe. His comment was he could put a, a Mickey Mouse mix on it to get through a little bit, but we might as well do a little right. But we've already had a Mickey Mouse mix on it. We've got through. That's so, right. Point. Yeah, you know, so if we write that for you, we're talking about right now. Once again, I think we, because of the $35,000 difference, I think we would do ourselves a great service. I mean, the material, the material would do that way more. I don't have all the material. I don't know. Yeah. What I'm saying is we should listen to it. Yeah. I mean, I'll entertain anybody who wants to look at it and get some price on it. I don't have a problem with that at all. Okay. Um, we just need to, <coughs> it was previously done as cheaply as they could get it done with the product that wasn't designed to span that free. I understand that. We don't do it. Well, I'm, not, I'm just giving information to the patient. So, do we want to redirect that grant and see if we can get money to try to fix that this year? Do we? Okay. Please. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, we 
May 2nd. Robert Company. Yes. Scott Harrison. Yes. Dana Peterson. Yes. Discussion. Could the minutes show that I wasn't allowed to talk about the Foots Creek Dale Gibson? Okay, do you got something on the Foots Creek Dale? Sure. I'm sorry, I didn't. I, everybody was talking about other things. So, if you got something on the Foots Creek Boom? Yes, I do. Yeah. If, if you have a bid for forty thousand dollars <laughs> and you haven't examined the pipe yet, are you just going on the assumption that you're going to just replace everything to start with? Well. We're not, the pipe is a lot longer than what we're replacing it. So, I don't know, a couple thousand feet up the, buried up the hill. I mean, it, there's a lot of it from the future. So really what we have is a bid without knowing where we're going. We've got, we've got a bid to replace the pipe on the flume. This is a heavy, a solid, plastic pipe and it will be brought in and welded, chemically heated, whatever. So it becomes one piece of pipe. Uh, and that's going to be from where it exits the flow, clear down, where there's a screw gate. Uh, there's a tea box that we can spill water there. Mm -hmm. um, so that pipe can go clear to that screw gate. Then from there, and I'm sorry I don't have footage in front of me, he bid so many feet of replacing the buried pipe that we that has blown out twice, once last summer, once this summer, um, that we, that's just really rusty for me, it's very hot hole. So we were going to replace, I don't remember, it's a hundred feet of it or something. So well, that, we, that's what your bid is based on, yes, doing yes. that completely replacement. Yes. Okay. And then we thought, you know, once we got up a hundred feet, we could evaluate if the existing pipe was still good farther up the hill, where maybe water hasn't been sitting in it as much, it might still be good and we wouldn't have to replace the rest of it. Okay. We don't, obviously we don't want to replace something right now that we don't have to replace it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Minutes. Yes. Yes. Okay, we are going to um, start with our patrons in with questions. We're going to try to hold everybody in five minutes. If you can make it a little briefer, I'm sure everybody would appreciate it. Um, and we'll do the best we can to answer the questions. And maybe, you know, your questions can take place in somebody else's and we can well have to go through everything. We'll start at the top. Um, or what I'm assuming is the top. I don't know where we started. John Green, patrons, would you like to address the board? No. John Green? You've told no. me everything. Okay, appreciate it, thank you. Uh, Richard Ross. Yes. I'm Richard Ross. I live at Point Eleven on River Highway. I want to thank the board for their uh, service to the district. Uh, where I live, my property and my neighbors back BLM. BLM backs our property. And we use the irrigation to keep the, the grass and the greenness around the properties keep the fire danger down. Across the uh, road on the hill has burnt over twice that I know of recently in the last few years. And the debris has come over into our fields and our yard. And without, if that grass was green, or dry, we would have a serious problem there on the property. My question is, can we burn it till in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, end of October? rather than this coming month. Um, can we do the work then? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? And there's our conundrum. We, we have to start it 
We're supposed to be finished with the in-stream work by September 15th. We cannot start anything after September 15th, the in-stream work. It just can't be done. State of Oregon? It's a, it's a federal law, yes. Do you have a copy of that federal law? I do not. Where do we find it? Yeah. It's Fish and Wildlife. Yeah, Fish and Wildlife, the FNW would we'll probably have that, ORS. Who is the, who is the uh, uh, who, ruling authority me, in this? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll finish this in here. Go ahead. The, uh, how did you learn about this? Well, through Waterwatch, um, is who's you know, talked to us about who's been... Uh, who is Waterwatch? Waterwatch is the nonprofit group that has helped to remove the Savvy Rack Dam. That's what I'm talking about whether we like it or not. Right. How do I get a hold of these people that send me a bill if my property burns? Uh, we can probably get you a number today. Okay. Uh, if you need that, we can get you. Thank you. Okay. No. 
good. Okay. Uh, Bob Pierce. I have Okay. Oh, since then. I'm not sure what you're going to do. Faye Bradley, do you have anything? My answers are being, my questions are being answered as I say. And I was hoping that as this went on, I know everybody's still not happy with it, but Absolutely. hopefully everybody will accept it. Um, do we have Mark, a Mark, 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 Yeah. 
what they have to do is they have to build a coffer dam around where they need to do the construction work. Then they have to come in with pumps and dewater them. They have to pump the water. They have to have ODFW there with volunteers to collect all the little fish that are trapped and release them. And then once they've collected all the fish and released them, they can finish dewatering. And then at that point, they can actually start to work on the gate. We work behind that in the water. Has that been tried to be segmented so you're not tied up for four to six weeks at all? Well, the first thing they have to do is get that gate. And that's what I talked to them about today. Can we build the copper dam, do the dewatering, build that wall and that gate? They've got to make a new cut to our our diversion and there's some repairs and but there's a bunch of engineering there to do. Mm -hmm. But if he could get all that concrete done in three weeks, and then you know then they're gonna start piping all of that ditch that goes to our old gate adjustments. But we will not be in the water at that point. But, yeah, we would so be what are we looking at segmenting that to where we're not down, you can do that later. That's what I talked to them today about. Now you know we've got a bid from them. So at the risk, and, and we don't have any wiggle room. We don't have any more money. If he added, you know, three thousand dollars to it, we don't have enough to get. It. So unless we just take it out of our pocket, we don't have any more credit. I asked him about could you do the concrete work where the gate would be on it? Because the goal is at the end of the irrigation season is to close that gate so that water is no longer being exactly. sent down the channel. And in and he's got a concrete crew to come in, and then he's got the pipe lane crew to come in. So said, could we not break the pipe lane crew? Could you just come down and do the concrete work, get the gate attached. Once it's secured enough, can we just open that gate, put the water back in, and then have him come back in October or something and do the pipe? And he said, yes, that might work out well for him. I don't know that, you know, that was, Today, making several phone calls, trying to figure out a way to maybe get water back in the ditch as quickly as we can. Um, to do all the piping, there's going to be pipe and a couple manholes, quite, quite a bit of pipe delay. And that's, that's you know, a six-week job. Um, you know. But at that point, we're probably to a point where we wouldn't even open the ditch back up. Right. But, so I'm trying to get it where maybe we can open it up in three weeks. And then come back and do that because now we're not in the stream. We've got a gate we can close, and exactly. the river's right. on the other side of it. Now, the other question I have is do we have anything in writing from this water lock outfit <laughs> that says that if we comply with this, that they're not going to bother us about anything else, right? Yes, yes. We do have that in writing. Yes, we, we made that clear that everything that they've engineered, we hired an engineering firm, everything brings us up to compliance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And we have a contract with you know, with a contractor that has nothing to do with Water Watch. We had six different bids. Um, we went through all of those. That contractor has nothing to do with it. We have a contract with him to do that work. So if people are thinking, well, they're going to tear it out and not replace it, you know, Water Watch isn't tearing it out. The contractor that we hired, we have a contract with, bonded, insured, all that, uh, they'll be doing the work. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Can I get yeah. clarification? Um, I'm just trying to envision as you told that you said that it's the amount of water that we're letting go out to the ocean is being unused. What difference is it if it goes out in the river form or in our dish form? You're talking to the wrong guy. I you know, I got black what what's it hurting that water going down there? It's going back in the river. I'm not a fish biologist. Well that's bad for the fish. They stick it to stream, but then they want to migrate up into a Yeah. I mean, we said, how about we give you a box of shells and kill some sea lions and come out the river, you'll save more fish. <laughs> <laughs>
goes up through the canal, we use what we use, and then the rest goes back into the river, correct? Creates a false attraction. Okay, where's the water now once it comes through the head gate with their new system? And we use what we use. Now where's that water going to go? We're going to adjust it at the intake and only put water in the ditch that we use. Nothing will spill back to the river. Are we going to have the same volume of water? That yes. They, it's all been sized to deliver in excess of what our water right actually is. Our ditch won't even carry our full water right. But the inside, that pipe is sized to carry our whole water right. And, and then it's and more because there is a pipe within the fish streams that runs water back to the river. So if any fish do get in that, um, they can go out this pipe back to the river and not in our in our ditch. Oh, they don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, ditch was put in in around 1916 okay so the official record shows it about 1920 okay those fish have been going up the river for approximately 94 years and all of a sudden in 2000 and this isn't anything to do with the board here but all of a sudden in 2014 the new steelhead and salmon become very confused um, they've been confused probably for 94 years um, and I think it's not so much the salmon and the steelhead that are confused it's the people that are trying to manage the steelhead and the salmon okay um, so with that being said I have a problem with water works I don't trust them they're not a, a state-run organization. They're a conservation group. The same conservation group that punched a hole in the Gold Ray Dam when they had an order on the judge's desk to stop and cease from any actions. What they want is, they want nothing 
in this river that affects those fish. They don't want any spillways, they don't want any dams, they don't want any diversions in any way, shape, or form. So if we sit here and we trust these people, I don't. I mean, it all sounds great. And, you know, another thing is, too, is when you have a federal grant, if that grant's not used within a certain amount of time, what happens to that grant? Done. So they get their wish. They put the rock in our canal. We don't have water. I'm the board of director for Rogue River Fire District. One of the worst seasons we've seen in eons. We've got lightning strikes. Uh, we've got fires going on everywhere. Um, everything is going to be a dust bowl. It's going to be dry. And so this is a bad year, but there's probably no good time to do it. But what I want to see done is I want to see guarantees and I want to make sure that this thing is done in, in a timely fashion, which it sounds like Scott's got it going on, but it's not so much I don't trust our board, I don't trust these people. So, you know, and I don't understand why Waterworks tells our board if you don't comply with what we want, you're going to be fine. Well, who are you? Now, with that being said, conservationists. Klamath Falls has a real problem. They have a very, very shallow, huge lake. They have a very huge mosquito problem. So some bean counter up in Salem, environmentalist, by the way, came up with this beautiful bug that kills the mosquitoes. Well, guess what? The mosquitoes are gone away. Now they've got this bug they can't get rid of. It's annoying. It, you can't walk out there. So these are the same people that I'm trusting to do the ditch repair. So, a conservationist is what I'm saying. They, they cause the ditch repair, but they are not doing it. Conservationist. I'm, I'm speaking in general, generalization here. So, anyway, those were my comments. Now, Scott, with this repair work that we're going to do, once it starts, you're saying that the repair will be completely done in October. Is that what I'm hearing? It's a two-phase part. We didn't get enough grant money to do the whole project. So we're doing the intake, and then there's two bins in that ditch. So we're doing a pipe to a manhole, to another pipe to the second manhole, and stopping there. And then they're going to work on getting a grant that they can come in, hopefully, you know, next October or something to finish pipe. So not this October, you're talking next October. Next October. completion. Yes. Yes. So unless they can somehow get the money that they can maybe just finish it this year, they're working on that. Um, I did tell them, I uh, sent a letter when they decided to do the two-phase deal, that if we did, if we agreed to a two-phase project, that if for some reason they couldn't raise any money to finish the second phase, that there, none of the agencies would hold us in non-compliance or say that we have to finish that second phase without, you know, out of our own pocket. So with that being said, we have no guarantees that it can be finished if they don't raise the money? Correct. Okay. But I mean, the water still, I mean, at that point, it just runs in the same canal. They, Fish and Wildlife wanted to pipe farther so that when we shut the ditch off at the end of the year, that water drains out of the pipe and carries the fish with it. Instead of not piping it and shutting the gate off, you have all the little fish stuck in that canal. So piping it is, was their solution to getting the fish from our gate to the fish creeks. Originally, they wanted to put the fish greens at the point of diversion. So that will never work. That was flooding and all of that. Because they wanted, they didn't want any fish going down there. But everybody finally realized that that's impractical. There's too much flooding. That all that it's underwater every you know five or six years it's totally underwater. And it would have been destroyed. Okay, so with that being said, we've got August, September, October, no water. And then we've got all next fire seat or all next next year with no water. Oh, no, no, no. We'll be on by yeah, next year. Yeah. At the beginning of April. Yeah, we can water all that here, and then when they get the money to finish 
piping it, then at the end of the season next year, they'll come in and finish piping what they wanted to pipe. Before our season starts. Well, it would be at the end of next season. We would probably get the money at the end of next year's water. But would that fall into the penalty? Yes. It's not industry work. Okay. That's, that's, the industry work will be done. We've piped it, you know, a okay, thousand so, feet. So next and so now after next season, I mean, they'll get the money. I'm so I'm a little confused. So next May, when our water is supposed to, well, actually it's supposed to be turned on in April, but you guys always start it around May 10th. So next May 10th, next we'll year, have water. we're going to have water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. That. No, it, it'll be, the, the con we have a contract with a contractor that will have that work done by a specified amount of time. Okay. It will be done this year. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tom Steed. No, no, no. no. okay, no. Uh, Mark. No, I'm not very good. Schnauz. Schnauz. Thank you. Um, Mark and Gary Schnauz, up the River Road, Gold Hill, we are now users. I spent the entire day writing this down. I will try to make it very quick in the last five minutes. Okay? And I will not bore you. Okay. How many of you folks would like this project stopped? How many? So, not that many.
We can do that. We have to raise your rates. We we raised your rates one time in I don't know, 15, 13 years. So we, our broad rates went up a couple years ago, and it was the first time in 10 years. If everybody wants us to do more, all we need is more money, and we can do. More. Well, more. So maybe we need to have some vote sometime, a mailer to say do we want to raise our water rates and fix more things. It's going to take more manpower, more concrete, more excavation, another part-time ditch tent or something. So we've never even considered going down that avenue. We've always just done what we can with what we have. Um, so I will always be looking for comments. We are meeting to the first Wednesday of every month. Please come down if you're thinking we've got an issue we want to look at. We'll look at it. I mean, it's, it's just communication. The problem that usually happens is I'm out there at 6 o'clock at night pouring concrete and somebody starts chewing my ass because we've got another leak and how come it's not fixed and what are you guys doing about it? I'm like, come on, you know. I don't need that. So, so, so if we just need more money. If you guys, if, if everything's going okay, we'll just keep it up. Otherwise, we need to raise our rates. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> Is there a possibility of extending our water here? If perhaps we get the water back on, say by September the 15th, is there a possibility? You know, I, we can contact the water master and see if he'll let us go longer. If we're giving them back three weeks of water, why can't we pack it on again? Right. Usually, we by have late, a late start on our <laughs> Usually by that time, the rains have kind of start happening and we don't really need it. Most people, I think, by the end of the season are ready to put water. But, uh, but if it's still hot, dry, and, and we can look at that. We can get a whole water master saying, can we get a temporary three week, four week extension or, or until weather comes? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great idea. I was just curious, who, who wrote the grant for this? Um, I think uh, we worked a lot with RV Cog, World Bad Council Governance. We, we hired them to help with some of the grants. I think Water Watch Group went out and uh, find grants. We had donations from some fly fishing places. Um, We've got money from several different places. We don't just have one grant to do the project. So this particular project has multiple grants? Yes. You know, grants are pretty easy to get for municipalities like this. I mean, they come from more than one place. Who wrote the uh, specifications for the project? Uh, yeah, I think it was River Design Group that did all the engineering for the project. And are there liquidated damages to the contractor for his completion date? Yes. It's in the contract. In the letter that was sent out. You, you, you know, I don't have a contract with you. I mean, you can read the contract. In the letter that was sent out in January, didn't you imply that this was going to be taking place in October? Well, we did, and it, and it, it also says that. At that time, I don't think we knew exactly when the in-street work would happen. It could, it kind of depended on that. And I've done a lot of work on the river too. I'm a contractor, and <clears throat> there's 27 different agencies that have regulatory business on the Rogue River. Do you know who issued the permit? Who applied for the permit? We we have a half a dozen permits to do this project. Okay. There is a, somebody is a ruling entity on this project. Who? Army Cobb. What's your Army Cobb? But I mean, which state agency? Department of State Lands is one with the Borough of Park. Big department. Department of State Lands, your DSL, your Borough of Park. We've got land use plans from Jackson County. They're the ruling agency on this project? They're, they're the ruling? Uh, state agency on this project? Well, we had to apply for permits to them, yes. 
And they issued the permit? We're waiting to hear on the DSL for the build permit. So do you have the permit? We're waiting to hear by the 20th of August. We should have their permit in hand. There was a public hearing. We had comments received. BLM answered the comments on the cultural resources. And now it's back up to the Department of State Lands. Okay, because I've, I've done these permits that take two years. You know, I don't know, and, and they tell you a certain day you're going to have that permit, and it never happens. Is there any way to defer this date and grant use? Good question. I don't think so. And in the writing of the specifications on this contract, why wasn't there a contingency, uh, not only for operational, but for funding for you know, some way to either gravity feed water around this or pumping around this or whatever so that, I mean, if I had a ranch in Bend, if you shut the water off in Bend like this, uh, you think this is a rowdy bunch. I mean, it, it would have never happened. You, you just you just can't, I mean, I know most of us here are probably gentlemen farmers. You know, there's a difference if, if there's a, a real significant economic loss going on because of water which takes place up there. You know, I would think that that would have been an important thing to, to get in this uh, specification, the contract or research. Is there a way to... You know, we talked at the very beginning with River Design Group about, you know, ways why they, they couldn't put a pipe through there to deliver water, why they were doing some of the stuff. That, we talked about all of that early on. Not sure what happened with all that. That that was discussed at one point. I, I know it, it doesn't take a lot of pipe. You can siphon a huge. The Israelis siphon an entire river over a mountain range. Right. I mean, you can move a lot of water just siphoning with a short distance of pipe. But it, it would seem to me like in the research of this whole thing, that that would have been a huge part of this is figure out how to. You know, not yeah. not not at our. I know, wish I mean, you would have been here in some of this. Would have really helped. Well, I mean, I don't have that back. Um, you know, lastly, you know, I, I appreciate everything you guys are doing too. It, it would, you know, I work just like you do, six o'clock at night, still trying to finish it up. I think it'd help everybody, and I don't know what the cost of it, you know, would be above your budget to get a website where you guys could really keep us on top of everything that's going on. We can. Right. Well, blah, 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 back somebody, to you. You need somebody to manage the website. To, they cost money. You know, somebody's got to, somebody has to know how to they're, do, they're, look into they're, that. They're, they're cheap. I mean, this day and age is... Look, we can have meeting minutes just email to all of us, and that's great. Yeah. Well, we've looked into websites and doing that. We've just really never had somebody to manage it. I'm not a computer guy. I don't yeah. I have a hard time running this phone. Um, yeah, but it, if, if anybody would like to help with something like that, great, let's do it. it we, it's kind of up to a lot of people. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is this gentleman telling us that there may be another way around this? Or are we off into this contract, Scott? Uh, what's that? Is this gentleman telling us that there may be another there's, there's always another way. You just got to find which yeah. agency is mean, steering the contract. contract signed, the contract can do the work. At this point, we're paying him whether he does it or not, I guess. He doesn't produce the funds where we don't get the grant by the 20th, are you going to be turning the water off without the permit? No, I don't know. See, when there's no liquidated damages on a project, he, he likes to tell you when I can start so I have lots of time. So I can make sure that I, you know, it's comfortable for me. We can show up when we want to, don't want to. But when you have a thousand dollars a day liquidated damages because you're not performing, yeah. and you don't have enough guys on the job, you know, and you're not making this happen because the rest of us, you know, have a ten thousand dollar field burning up. You know, it's, you know, no big deal to him. Right. 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 Hey, Scott. It's come to my attention that there's a member in the audience here that's from Water Watch. This gentleman right here is from Water Watch. So you're getting hammered with a lot of stuff. Maybe this gentleman would like to come up and take some questions. Sure. So 
if anybody has anything to ask Water Watch. Maybe I'll just. Uh, here's your guy. Uh, this guy wanted to just give a brief summary of what um, we got or not. I'd be happy to do nothing if you want me to do that. Sure, sure. So, um, Water Watch is done. Okay, my name is Bob Hunter. I'm a board member of Water Watch of Oregon. I've lived in the Rogue Valley for over 30 years. Uh, I've been involved in a lot of river restoration work. I'm involved with it because I care about the fish. Uh, your diversion system was identified by state and federal fishery agencies as a high priority because of damages to fish. We've documented fish when they go through the spill, they get stranded and die. Uh, fish enter the canal. Excuse me, okay. So the reason we're interested in the project is because uh, state and federal fishery agencies uh, had indicated that your diversion was harming fish. Oh, okay, sorry. And, and, and in fact, we have documented fish are go going into the canals. Your spill system is over a rudimentary bank, and it fans out, fish gets stranded. We find uh, dead steelhead in there, we find uh, young dead fish in there. Uh, in the spring, we found salmon that get up to the spill, can't, they get trapped by false attraction flow. So it does cause a harm to fish, and whether people think it does or not, that's our, still our motivation. Uh, we believe it does in the agency. So, what we wanted to do is find a solution and find a solution that would work for the district. So we contacted the district and said, look, here's a series of issues that you face. You face issues with the, your diversion under your water right because you can't control your diversion at the uh, top of the canal. And you have problems with ESA listed coho salmon and heart. And I said, we can solve these problems and we're willing to work with you to find a solution and to find the money to do it. So we, we met with the board, we found money to hire an engineer, and the board hired the engineer to look at alternatives. We didn't even know what the best way to do would approach it. And we, looked, we looked at several different designs, several different ways of doing things, a lot of different things. And the district set parameters. Still had to be gravity feed, so you didn't have a power cost. Uh, couldn't increase your maintenance costs. Um, still would deliver your full water. So those were the instructions to the engineer. And the engineer came up with a series of alternatives and they were vetted with all the state and federal agencies because we wanted buy-in. So if something was done, we know the district is gonna be whole afterwards. So we got buy-in on a solution that everyone agreed to, uh, to move the head gates up and pipe the system and ODFW is gonna redo the bypass system. And so then water wash by agreement with the district we set off and we've spent countless hours to find money. And the money actually is state money. Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board money that comes from the lottery. And it's uh, ODFW uh, restoration enhancement money that comes from license fees. So it's actually not even tax dollar money that we found. And then we got uh, uh, Water Watch and some other local groups kicked in some money as well. Uh, as did some of the fishing clubs and we're still gonna go out and fulfill our commitment and find money to do phase two. So we spent a lot of time and effort to find all the money to bring you guys up to date, and we're doing it for the fish, but at the same time, you guys get brand new infrastructure at no cost to you, and the cost is large. And we have a lot of permits we had to go through. It's already cost us something like 50 or $60,000 just to get the permitting done. We've got $151,000 to spend on this first phase. Pardon? Yes, and so we also worked with the agencies to try to make sure we interrupted the irrigation season as late as possible. It's actually a state, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife rule that creates the in-water work window that's bought into by the feds and NOAA Fisheries and all the permitting agencies. So we needed a core permit, a DSL permit, a permit from the county, uh, some sign off by DEQ, and all those, and the railroad, uh, because part of the, your, your canal is on railroad property. And the permitting agencies require anybody doing in-water work window to comply. And, and so what we worked out is the agencies bought off on the idea is if we started the project during the in-water work window, they would give us a variance to let us do most of it later. But at a drop dead date, you had to be done by October 15th because that's when coho salmon are in the system. So the district board, worked hard on that. We worked with all the agencies hard on trying to buy as much time as possible. Unfortunately, couldn't buy the whole irrigation season to get you. So it is, is a problem, but 
the other thing that someone mentioned earlier, what you end up with at no cost to you right now, because if a state or federal agency said you had to do something, you'd have to do it at your cost or you'd be shut down. And what WaterWatch did is we expended our resources to go out and spend a lot of staff time in grant writing and working with the district to get the funding, which we've been successful in so far. We came up short because uh, the engineer's bid was short. And we're already working on getting the funding for phase two. And we already have some additional contributions by some local groups, including WaterWatch, for phase two. I mean, we're sinking money into it as well as staff time. Uh, because we care about the fish and the river, but also because we promised the district in our deal we would do it and make sure it was done on it without cost to the district in terms of cash. There is the cost, of course, of this one-time inconvenience that you'd have anyhow at some point if you had to do something. So anyhow, that's how we got here. We've been working closely with the board. We've been trying to address all the concerns and engineer and stuff, and that's, that's how we're, where we are today. Do you have issues with the diversion dam? Um, yes, there are issues with the dam, but we did not make that the issue because the board said we want gravity feed. So we designed... The states that it will not be taken out. So what's to... We have no intention to take it out. That's never and even and that's not, a, not, not part of the requirement or anything we but said. What's to say down the road that you don't like it because it's inhibiting fish and say it has to come out? Well, I don't know what the future will bring. All I can say is for me personally, who've worked on this, we made a deal with the district and we intend to comply with it. Has there been an environmental impact study done on this? Uh, there has been environmental review, yes, done by the Bureau of Land Management an project on, on this. There's been an because do you, do you realize the fish spawn in that canal? There's been an environmental assessment there. done which complies with the So we had to go through that yeah. stuff too. We had to go through cultural resources and all permits. And there's been a couple years and a lot of money spent in doing just that to make sure the project's done right. So it's okay to dig up the canal and no one's going to say anything about That's correct. disturbing the spawning ground. That's correct. Because we, we've got the, we're we're we've got the permits. Um, I don't know, but the time I've spent there, and we had looked into this before WaterWatch approached us because the spillway gates are so deteriorated, I think I talked about that, the concrete, that we need to stop that flow all winter long. And at, at our diversion, there's chunks of concrete, and we were looking at getting steel plates that we could try to drop in there to stop that flow. And we were kind of looking at different things that maybe we could do so that that water wouldn't be flowing because I mean, even then, we knew that we're not supposed to divert that water all right. Well, I'm just worried about down the road if there's something that can come back. Right. Well, you know, you know, the, you know, the intention of this project. What the, when this project is done, that it, it meets we, we the right of the federal government. It meets all criteria. We, we, had, we spent a year meeting with the state and federal agencies, and they bought into the alternative. They signed off on it. We're, we, we made sure that we weren't going to go spend a lot of money and not meet their criteria. So and I thought that's what we did. And said, we don't need to pipe it. The piping was a huge cost. And we don't need to pipe it. So they put the, the, the gate in there and just leave the open dip. We don't need to. And I, I fought them. And finally, it was ODF and that Bureau of Fish and Wildlife will not sign off on the grant or, or say that we comply unless we pipe that. So when we shut it off, it moves the fish through that, the small fish, through that canal to the exit point that are straight. So there's actually no fisheries that came up with well, that. There's going to be an exit point with us. Well, there, there, there is right now. There always is. Yeah. Yes. But the pipe won't be an exit point. Yes. Yes. Well, there's still where the fishery is. If, if you go in there, water goes through grapes and goes into the fish streams that keeps the fish from going out of the canal. Right. And there's an eight-inch pipe kind of in the corner there. Oh, yeah, and if the fish get into that, they can they go through that and drop back into the river. And we were non-compliant on a couple of different things that they're fixing. Oh, they have to tell you about it. That will be fixed too. That will be fixed as well. They've already done some of them. Um, we've met them up there. But they want most of that ditch pipe so that when we shut it off, that water travels freely and quickly through the pipe and doesn't strand fish in that ditch. I mean, and they, I'm not a fish biology, I think a lot of them are involved, but it is what it is. The, the 
the new headgate will have a fish screen in it, right? No, 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 there's no fish screen in the new headgate. The fish will be able to come right into that, and they'll go down that pipe. It's freely, you know, it, it encourages them to just go down the pipe. They'll go into our fish screen area oh, and down. through that back to the river. There will be a gate up there that will shut off. At the end of the season, it will shut off. No water will flow through the pipe. Okay. Yeah, in the wintertime, it's, it's all going to be capped, it's all going to be buried. So now we have a lot of trouble with vandalism and people throwing stuff on that ditch, being Richards up there with chains and pickups and winches and trying to clean it out. Now that will be piped. There'll be gates on the ends of it that will be all buried in dirt. You know, people there can walk to the river. I mean, in some ways that will enhance that. Well, I want to put it into the contract with the contractor to supply temporary water and paint during this problem. Why well, wasn't that right with all of us? I mean, that seems like we're number one, right? This is all for us. Well, we we well, started out all the idea was going to be yeah. towards the end of the season that it would be kind of happening towards the end of the season. We wouldn't need the water. We could get by for a few That's weeks. That's my second question. You've got an exclusion to work through the 15th of October. If the work takes a month, why don't you shut us off like mid-September? I think everybody right now on that Man, August 15th. Yeah. I mean, that's the reason. I don't think that's going to start by September 15th. I'm sorry? Where do you want to start the work September 14th? Well, you said you said it takes about a month. The way it works, you have to start within the in water work window and you have to be done, absolutely done, no later than October 15th, I think is the very So you start at 14th in September? But you have to allow enough time to make sure it gets done. And that's the contract they call it. And that's the contract they call it. Everyone cares if it's done, it won't be watering. Don't you see my point? The permits, water, yeah. permits require it to be done. I mean, I'm just saying. I think we should check. It might be September 1st. I, I might be wrong on that. But I think the reason for I pushing it to. Be yes, but it has to be started within the in order work window, which might be September 1st. September and then you start it in September and then you get it done. And I imagine part of that start work would be September 14th. You might have five days. I'll just say this. This stuff is determined by the, the state and federal fishery agencies and the Army Corps of Engineers and DSL and the permitting agencies of what they'll allow you to do and well, start and finish. The, the, the permitting agency. Okay, when we were told it has to be done between June 15th and yeah. started by June 15th and ended by October. So we have to be starting to work the window for history work. What I understand is from June 15th. It has to be started within the work window, right. and you get a variance to extend it beyond if there's well, which, which we already have. Which we already have. Which we already have. Which we already have. Yeah, that's all I the whole lot of Yeah, that's all I want. 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 That's We're missing more than that. If we get water, it's pretty, it's pretty in the end of October and according to the paper. So we're missing, we're missing two and a half months of our water here. Is what we're missing. It says you're supposed to run water through like October 31st. Okay. No, no. Uh, uh, April 2nd, October 31st is what the irrigation season is. That's what it is. Yeah, but when it's pouring down rain right outside, we use Then you're paying a guy to go clean the grades and do all that stuff. Right. But if it's needed, 
Pardon? But if it's needed, right. it stays open until open. Right. I mean, this year, if they can get it done, we can open it back up. We can, I mean, we can leave it. It's the state of Iowa. We can certainly do that. We, what what will you know about the three week uh, plan? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll be able to talk to you tomorrow and find out where they're all at. There were some other questions I asked him about um, when cause we had a scheduled time for the fish salvage, and he was, he was getting in there sooner than we had scheduled. So he goes, I got the contract again, so we need to kind of hash all that out. It sounds like yeah, and, and just a, a comment on that, a word of caution. If you do the hit then the pipe can be done. Yeah, the pipe can be done any time. Then we're out of the rain street. I, I would just say, first of all, Water Watch would like you to have your water as long as you can this season. And the only caution I throw out there is it's not just with the contractor, it's an issue you'd have to go back and get approval by the fish agencies of the change of plan and maybe some of the permitting agencies because the permits have already been defined. So that's just a, a cautionary thing. That I, you know, it's not our decision, whatever the board can work out with the contractor and the agencies, that's fine. But I'm just, just a word of caution. I don't know how much flexibility. The meetings we have with water watch, there was a lot of talk about later and extensions and putting a pipe in. Or, I mean, we did all that. We'll get as long as we can. But it came right down to getting permits from the federal agencies, everybody, well, this is when you can, I mean, everybody started giving us the windows. We, you know, we can't just do what we want to do. We're, we're restricted by some of Grand cycles aren't that fast. <laughs> the bottom line, well, um, you might have this for a while. You've got to do that walk. Okay, I've been in the beginning. I've been in the beginning for about three steps. I'm hoping it's three weeks or four weeks. Okay, then we get back on that water's point. That's the contender. He's thinking he wanted to start the 18th, and he was going to start the dewatering like the 19th. Tuesday, I think it is, and we're talking about, no, that's not when the fish shower was going to be, it's later, so. We had always tried to push it out as long as possible, so with ODF and W, we were, we're, the idea was, is it wouldn't be cut off to about August 27th or 8th, and we had the fish salvage on the 28th to push it out as far as uh, we could, and so that now apparently hasn't been communicated with the contractor.
the engineer, all the engineering, what had to be done, the permitting agencies, the insurance they had to provide, when they when the work would be done. Did you get any bids from any local contractors? Like yes, sir, all of them. Three of them. They were all higher. Mm -hmm. Usually that means better quality work. The, uh, the closest contractor wanted about three times more on the bid to, to stage his stuff. We may have a broke down. So the closest contractor wanted the most money. Was he going to supply timber and water? Be something to ask the water master whether someone could yeah. do it. If you probably uh, uh, went downstream, of which you'd be doing anyhow, maybe there's where he'd say, Yeah, go pump away. Or, yeah, you mentioned some Most people to me come up as part of the problem, not the solution. Nobody says, can I help 
do this, but it's like, and that's why do I want to be proposing? Okay? That's, that's, what that's, that's, that's what we need to do. We need some more communication. Hey, we're owners. We can all participate and help with some of this labor that's saving us money so we can spend what little money that they've got doing other things. This issue with this water group, quite frankly, it sounds to me like you're blackmailing us. That's what it is in bottom line to me. That I heard that if we don't do this, you're going to the feds to report us. That's blackmail. Plain and simple. I don't see it any other way. We don't have to report the feds. Well, we don't have to do anything. Okay? It's blackmail, okay? And I think it could have been opposed a little bit differently. That being okay. said, hey, that yeah. If we don't do this, we'll be fine. We're having quotes going on here. Okay, so I, I'm just telling you what I heard, my interpretation of what I heard. You heard it right. We got some issues with everybody.
guys can get a copy of anything in minutes from last year. Contra you, you guys are entitled to that. You may have to pay $2 to get something, but you can get copies of anything you want to look at. Where it is supposed to be transparent. Yeah. So it's American. I'm sorry. Trees are dying along the rivers. The water tables on people's property are dropping where they no more have well water and they have to truck water in and pay for storage. Well, yeah. So these people are doing a wonderful job for the minnows. I mean, it's cost some people hundreds of thousands of dollars. None of us are fish pilots. I don't know why any of that happens. It seems that. Well, because any time you touch. None of the fish are extinct in those dams for another 100 years. I don't understand it. It seems silly to me. Somebody says that's a good idea. I don't know if it is or not. But well, I'm sure that's not my decision. I'm sure their intentions are well, but what they're touching is affecting us in a lot of other areas. And it's yeah, long term. It is, he says it's, it's going to be better in the long term. Some of us are but only this year. 
Yeah, we'll yeah. talk to those people that don't have water on their property now, that live on the river. Yeah. Right. Because these guys are doing such a great and wonderful well, ecological yeah. job. And it's all a bunch of crap. Okay. Shane and Kathy. Maybe. Switzer. No. Jerry Smith. Okay. Harry and Carol Hall. Uh, Matt Hogan. Yeah, 
Well, because to fix the leak of Foot Street, we had to spill it at Miller Gulf.
way you can do it. So thank you all. That's part of part of my call.
point A to point B. There's a lot of people that hear about the fish. There's a lot of people that hear about the fish. And there's a lot of people who support our work. So it's all about people. There are winners and losers. So there has to be a balance and you guys are a general vision view. We don't care about balance. And, and some people love us, some people don't want us. Yeah. I don't want to show this. I'm pretending it. It's in danger. Sad. I think it's why I don't want human life. I just want trees.